Nate Smith. Hey, Nate. Here you are, buddy. You're going for number one. I mean, can you believe it? What's up, Bobby? I can't I, believe it. I mean, it's it's a weird thing because I'm sure, like, this was your goal and you knew you could do it. But now that it's actually happened and you have a song, again, that's battling for number one on the chart, it's got to feel a little surreal. What do you think about that? True or false? <laughs> Definitely true. Definitely true. What's What's been different in your life over the past five or six weeks since this song has really started to take off? I, I just think uh, just been a lot of excitement with my family and my friends and everybody's everybody's watching the chart, man. Um, so it's 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 good to know that I got everybody around me rooting me on. So I think Nate's turned into a bigger star even in the past five or six weeks, and I'll tell you why. Um, I texted him, and I didn't get a text back. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> it's an indicator right there. Well, actually, I, I texted you. <laughs> A fake album cover because our last interview we talked about being a uh, nurse assistant. And I said more poop than you could imagine, and you're like, "That's the, that's the uh, name of my album." So I did a picture with the the album title on it, and I sent it to you, and you hearted it, and I'm like, "He hates me." I I don't. Are you sure you said that to me? <laughs> Dude, we Dude, both have the wrong, wrong number. <laughs> We're both texting somebody that's not each other at this point. I did. You hearted it. I, did I? I, uh -huh. I need to go look. What hour did you text it to me though? Because if I was doing the radio show. Oh, there's, yeah, 1045. Yeah, I was still working. Mm. Dang. I'll, I'll go back and check. But I did have a new, you have my new number, right? No, 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 we got to do that. No, I think you do. I think that's the only number you have. <laughs> okay. Have you changed your number? I did. I did change my number. Oh, okay. Wait, okay. So that's the issue. I'm texting whoever's got Nate's old number. <laughs> oh, my. Well, also, he thinks you hate him because you just hearted it, but you should explain to him that. Oh, the a, heart's the biggest yeah. sign of... Bobby likes that. Uh, yeah, it's mm -hmm. like as much phone affection as you could possibly get. I don't throw the heart around. I throw the you thumbs don't. up around. The heart, I don't throw around. I'm, I'm, a, I'm like, that's, that's good to know because I think I always extra heart. Like, I heart every little thing that someone gets to kind of go, I received the message, I appreciate what you said, and it's probably over the top. Yeah, the heart is not, I received the message. Thumbs up is I receive it, and I... Okay, I see it, and I got it, and I somewhat agree. The heart is, I want to make sweet love to you in your album cover. Oh. <laughs> the thumbs up is kind of, like, rude, though, isn't it? Like, yeah, man. <laughs> like, it's kind of, like, passive-aggressive. See, I don't think it is. Do you? Well, I have felt that way in the past, but I think because yeah. you've explained to me, it's just an effective way of communicating. It's very clear that you're responding to that specific text with exclamation I got it, thumbs and up I or am, heart. I'm giving a satisfaction on the thumbs up. Or I see what you said. This is me acknowledging it, and I will follow through with what you've said. The heart is, you're sexy. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look. Nate Smith is on with us. He's got the song Whiskey on You. Hey, do you have a cool story about when you wrote this song? Like, where did you write it? Were you in, like, a one of these generic rooms where you're just meeting with other good writers? I don't know. What What's the deal here? All right. The, the short version is uh, me and my uh, ex-girlfriend broke up, obviously. Uh, like, she's an ex now because we, we broke up. But um, <laughs> we broke up, and then two days later, uh, I had a writer's retreat um, at Jim Catino's place, his lake house, and uh, ended up writing it out there. And um, we did the whole demo that day. I sang the vocal at the, at the kitchen table on, a, on a, like a cheap mic, and then we went to Nashville, and we... we, we uh, we ended up recording everything over at Blackbird and stuff, and it just didn't feel the same. So we ended up just mixing the demo, and that's what's out. That's that's the vocal you're hearing. And that's the music you're hearing. It's just the demo. Did you write a lot of good songs that writers were treated? Did you think a lot of them were good? And be honest here, or did you think this one was like super special, and so you fought for it? Yeah, no, I definitely like because we had two we had two rooms going at one time, so I was trying to juggle between the two rooms, but I felt like this was the one I needed to spend the most time on, so I probably neglected the other, right? Uh, and, uh, but I spent most of my time on this one, so. You gave the other right the thumbs up, mm -hmm. and you gave this right the heart. <laughs> that's right. Exactly what happened. That's what it's <laughs> You're too good. You're too good at this. Yeah, that's what, exactly what happened. Uh, you have, I just looked at your TikTok. You have like 1.4, 1 1.5 million followers. Do you, are you able to monetize your TikTok followers directly, or are you just hoping they're fans that will come to shows? Um, I don't know how to do all the monetizing. Um, you get a little bit of money from like the lives and stuff like that, but I'm, I am hoping that that people pre-save songs from there and then obviously come to shows. So, his name is Nate Smith. He was going to come in live, and I was looking forward to it very much. So, but what happened? Well, what happened was I saw how much you've been thumbs up and, and not enough hearting. Mm -hmm. So I said, let's hold the guy for a few weeks. Um, but cool. actually, he has a new album that's going to come out now in April. So we're going to wait for his in-studio appearance in, uh, in April. Why the album? get pushed back a bit wait so i'm, I'm in bobby bones purgatory you right? are you're in the middle oh. yeah 
Um, it got pushed because it was like we were going to drop it um, in February with not a whole lot going on. I was like, this doesn't really make any sense. Like, why do it while I'm sitting on the couch in Nashville? Let's do it while I'm out stagecoach, the Thomas Rhett tour, like lots of stuff happening so we can promote it and push it. So I think it makes more sense to do it with stuff happening than just laying there. Something, we, something new. We have uh, – well, first of all, we're looking forward to that, you coming in here. We have a guy on the show, Lunchbox, who loves to call 911. We were talking about that um, yesterday. You, how do you feel about 911? Have you ever called 911? Has there ever been a real life emergency? Or are you scared to call like I am because you feel like you'll end up in jail? So when I was nine years old, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was with my brother. We were at a uh, dog training for one of our, our, our dogs. And um, we, we used the pay phone there. Um, there was actually, that's how long ago this was. And uh, I, I convinced my brother that it was grandma at 911 and to make Beavis and Butthead jokes and stuff. So we're like calling uh, whoever's on the line of Butthead and all this kind of stuff. And then we kept doing it. And then a police officer showed up, and it was actually my dad because um, he was a cop. Uh, so he showed up, and he actually handcuffed us, put us against the wall. We had to go in and, and say sorry to all the dispatchers. And still <gasps> to this day, I see him my dad's old uh, coworkers. They call me 911 boy. That's oh, my gosh. Crazy. Yes. Yes. He put him in the penitentiary. Bad, bad boy. He served six months in jail. <laughs> like, your dad really went through with it. I like that. I was a bad boy. He was a bad boy. Uh, Nate Smith, congrats. I think the song is going to do it. It's a great song. Uh, big fan of you, even though I don't have his new number, apparently. I've been texting with some lady now who has Nate's old number. But congrats, and we'll see you when the album comes out. And anything else you want to say on your on your final trip here on the phone, Nate? Just just love you guys so yes. much. I appreciate all the help and everything. And nice. I will text you my new number right now so you can stop you know, feeling neglected. Well, I'm going to give this interview a thumbs up. Oh, okay. I give it a heart. <laughs> no, I give it a thumbs up. No, you know what? I give, I give it a... What are the other ones? I give it a ha ha. Oh, oh. ha ha. I give it a ha ha. points? Yes. Exclamation. Nah, I give it a ha ha. <laughs> All right, Nate. See you, buddy. See ya. All right, bye. There he is, Nate Smith. We're going to play his song now. Here's Whiskey on You, Bobby Bones. This is a Bobby Bones.